In this work, we generate realistic animation of expressive speech using codec avatars. We generate facial coefficients using only audio and gaze coordinates, which could be run on existing virtual reality devices. OK. Um, I don't know that I'm a good cook. I enjoy cooking. And so I, I guess I'll just say that. Um, I definitely, like, I, I used to cook more than I do these days. I think the thing I struggle with the most is breakfast foods. Like, I never know what to eat for breakfast <laughs> because, like, there's oatmeal, but, like, right now I don't have oatmeal. So, like, there's not, like, I don't have an actual breakfast food to eat. Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like cook with other people. <laughs> I, I do, like, have full control. Uh, yeah, so when I cook, I always ask all my family just, Go do whatever you want, just rest. <laughs> yeah. Most related work has centered on driving facial geometry alone from audio or full face geometry and texture using several face directed cameras. We shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets. This is my reality, and this is the reality of my people. I put such a high value on being top dog. A good morrow to you, my boy. All your wishful thinking won't change that. Okay, so I remember seeing sloths there, and I mean, they were very like slow moving. Here, we show three comparisons. Track data from our capture system, a baseline temporal convolutional network, and our proposed multimodal VAE fusion approach. The baseline and proposed models use audio spectrograms and normalized pupil coordinates as input. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. I, I researched and everything, and it's completely plant based, but it tastes so much like actual meat. Like, it's crazy. Like, when I first tried it, I almost had a panic attack because I'm like, why are you guys giving me, like, meat? Like, I literally, like, you guys know I'm a vegetarian, I like a vegan. And they're like, no, it's like completely plant based, but it's. So so good and it tastes exactly like me. Like the technology these days is crazy. <laughs> we collected over five hours of data across our three subjects. Here, we compare models trained only on data with descriptive speech, where the user, for example, reads sentences in a neutral manner, versus models trained on expressive speech tasks, where the user converses with another subject. We didn't really think about it much until we were like almost there, but like you have to actually like like what they said, like forge a river in order to get to the place. <laughs> Which, um, and like they, I said we had looked at this part like earlier, but like they told you you had to use like a, uh, some car with like four wheel drive, like an SUV. So like get there. And so we like started freaking out like, like um, on the way there because we were like, I don't know how to forge a river. Like, how do you like, they polished the windshield. Ideally, he knew, it should be preceded by concrete progress at lower levels. Mollusks are a case in point. Here, we compare audio-only models, gaze-only models, and combined models. Note that gaze improves both upper and lower face expression. Yeah, I, I think myself as a good cook. Uh, I started cooking. Uh, I started. I think I mainly started my cooking career <laughs> while I moved to the U.S., uh, uh, where I cannot find many good Chinese restaurants. Many related papers use phoneme or speech recognition-based embeddings. These tend to abstract away important nuance for generating expressive speech. We compare these against MEL spectrogram features, which tend to show more variation in facial expression and tend to have less muted lip articulations. No, I feel like, especially just like the last few minutes, months, I've just been like, like getting like married and everything. It's just like oh, yeah, I haven't been cooking as much, <laughs> so um, not 